Hello, today we're going to be helping out Strussel, who asked in the Johnny Goss Dev Discord. Howdy, Johnny Goss Dev and all. I found my way to your archery game looking for a guide on how to set up that dragon release kind of launching system. For me, I'll be launching air hockey like pucks, but I want to set up the same pull and loose sort of system for shooting them. Would the code from Apple Hunting still be laying around somewhere? And or would someone be willing to go over setting up such a thing? The game Strussel is referring to is a game I made for Game Maker's Toolkit Jam 2019. My goodness, that was a long time ago. The player simply shoots arrows by clicking and dragging back. Now the code is around somewhere, but to be honest, I'd probably do some things differently now. So let's take a look at how I'd implement this system. We'll be creating a scene which generates vectors when the player clicks and drags. The red line represents the vector created upon release, and the blue line shows the drag distance. You can see we've clamped the release vector to an arbitrary length to control the maximum force applied to the ball. The vector creator scene is its own entity. We want to avoid baking it into the ball or anything else because that'll make reusing it really difficult. Instead, we'll be using signals to communicate to other objects. Let's get to it. Let's take a look at the example scene here. So we've got a node 2D as the root. We've got our vector creator scene as a child. We've also got a ball, which uh, just has a collision shape and a sprite, and also a script attached to it. And finally, we've just got some static bodies just to keep the ball contained. Let's go ahead and create the vector creator scene. I'm gonna mess up that name so much, but we won't worry about it. The root node is an area 2D. I'm gonna rename it vector creator. And we're gonna also add a collision shape 2D. Over here, we're going to add a new shape. Now this shape is going to take the input of the user, specifically the first time the user clicks down. So you can make it whatever you want. I think I'll just, maybe just, maybe a bit bigger. 200 by 200 is fine. Uh, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to move this to the center of the screen. Lovely, now we've got that, we're going to add a new script. So we really need to think what we want out of this scene. What we want to happen is we want to click down, drag, and when we release, we want to emit a signal, which is going to pass along to whatever method it's connected to the vector that we just dragged. Now to save the tedium of me typing incredibly slowly, I'm gonna show you what we've got here. So first off, we've got this signal, the very important signal that's going to connect to, well, whatever we want. In our example, that's the ball, so we can give it an impulse and it flings across the screen. This signal is going to be released as soon as the user stops clicking. The first variable is the maximum length, and this is the hard limit of the strength of the vector, essentially. It's good to have a limit because, well, you might not want to fling the ball 500,000 kilometers an hour. Here we use a touchdown variable just to keep track whether the user has tapped down and is always clicked or not. And we've got the start position and the end position of the dragging, so we can keep track of that. And finally, the vector. The vector is what we're going to emit eventually with a signal. The first thing we're going to do in the ready function is connect the input event signal to the on input event method. Now this signal input event is something that is common between all collision shapes. If we go up to area 2D and hold control and left click, we can get up the class information here. Collision object 2D, if you click on this at the top, you can see that the signal input event takes three parameters. The viewport, the current viewport that we're in, the actual event, so that could be a click, an action, a key press, something like that, and the collision shape, basically, the idea of that. So we're tapping into this signal, we're gonna be using that. We only want input to be taken in this square. Obviously, you can make the shape as big or as small as you want. As we've taken a look, this takes three parameters. So our on input event function is going to look like this. We've got the viewport, event, and shape ID, but we're not worried about the viewport or the shape ID. We're just worried about the event. Now, as you can see here, I've created a custom action called UI touch, which includes the touch screens as well. So a tap on a touch screen is the same thing as a click. To do that, all you need to do is go up to project, project settings, input map and if i go down here to ui touch uh, if you plus mouse button and you want to do all devices that will include touch screens as well click add and you're good to go so if we tap a touch screen or we click down we want to set our touch down equal to true and also set the start position to the events position that's all well and good but we still need to add the dragging functionality but why are we using a separate input method 
rather than the on input event. Well, that's because this on input event method, because we've tied it to the input event signal, is only going to trigger when the event happens in that collision shape that we defined. So if we're not touching down, we don't want to do anything. And so we return from this method. However, if we are clicking down and the event is a mouse motion, so we're moving the mouse or we're moving our finger, we want to set the position end to the current event position. And we set our vector to the difference of each of these, the start and the end, clamped to our maximum length. And then we reverse it with this minus here. So the vector will be opposite of where we're dragging. That's how we get the kind of wind up when you've got a bow and you, you pull back and then release. Now to visualize our vectors, we're going to use the draw method, which is a canvas item method, which we can use to draw various shapes. So I'm going to use the draw line method to draw a line from the start position to the end position. And we're going to have that as blue, just like in the video before. We're also going to have a red line from the start position to our vector. So that will show you the release vector when we finally let go. In order for this to update, we are going to update it down here in the input. We're just going to do call a cheeky update and then we'll run the scene. Now, as you can see, we've got our two vectors here. We've got the vector that we're going to release as red and we've got our drag vector, which is blue. Uh, currently, I've just released now, but we haven't coded the release functionality yet. All we need to do to emit the signal along with the vector is check to see if the action is released. If so, then we set the touchdown equal to false because we don't want to deal with any more input and we emit the signal here. We also want to reset the values here because if we didn't, if we just tapped in a single position, then we would emit the same vector that we just had. So we reset all of the vectors to zero and we update our draw function. So let's see what that looks like. And with that, we have our scene. Now, how do we connect this to other things? Now in the demo scene, the ball is just a rigid body 2D with a script, which will basically take our vector, which we create with the vector creator, and then we apply the impulse to the ball. We also set the bounciness and the friction in the ready method, and that is our ball. So what we're gonna do is add our vector creator. Where are you? Uh, I think this is the one we just created. And we're going to connect the signal to the ball via the editor here. So vector created, we're going to, yep, select the ball. And instead of this method here being the receiver, what did I even call it? I called it launch, didn't I? Launch. There we go. If we click this button in the script editor, we can see that our method is connected to the vector creator and the signal that it's connected to is the vector created. This hopefully should now work. We should be able to launch this ball. Let's give it a go. Hey, and there we go. We are able to launch it. So there we go. Your very own vector creator that you can use for pucks or arrows or anything that you want, which also works on touch screens. Let me know if you thought of any other ways that you, you could do that or any other suggestions that you might have. Just put them in the comments below. And if you want to ask some questions, which I may or may not answer, you can go along to my Discord. The link is in the description below. With that, feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it and got something from it. Otherwise, see you next time. Cheers. So we, oh, 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 hey, there we go.